next one, but uh, it's still, we got some great teams left over. I can't wait to see who's going to be up against SKT. It's going to really be uh, an amazing match. Well, going into match number two here, after that reveal, we do have Byung versus Kira, as we said before. Here's Byung, and you guys know what time it is. <laughs> yeah, I know what time it is, fellas. That's right. That's it, Mom's Spaghetti time, man. We haven't heard this song in a little while. I, I would love so spaghetti. Well, this guy, the favorite for this uh, this match, I'd have to say. He's uh, He's been showing some great mech recently as well. I wouldn't be surprised if we see that yeah. this time around as well. Though it is Iron Fortress, one of those bigger, wide open maps that doesn't really favor that kind of style as much. Look at that purple arrow here. That kind of tells the story. If you look at his results all you know overall this year, he played 17 times, which is a pretty low amount of games to be played uh, for someone like Cure, who like uh, you know Valdez was mentioning earlier, played a ton last year. So something is missing. He's a bit off, and he's one of the filling players towards the end of the day. One of the holes they have to fill in their lineup. Young's been seeing a lot more play recently. Look at the results in this matchup as well. Here right now, one and five versus Terran. That's not a great place to be, and you can kind of see the emotions on his face as well, looking a bit nervous coming into this one. He's got the momentum on his side at least, so perhaps, you know, maybe he can carry that going into the second game. Maybe he's got a really specific build plan. On a big map like this, though, you would have to think he's going to plan to play for the late game. Well, guys, the second map is loaded up. It's going to beat Iron Fortress here for this TBT. Let's get into it right now between Byung and Cure. Down here in the bottom left, in the yellow, another Terran player from CJ Entis. It is Bjorn. And up here to the top left, in green for Jenner Green Wings, it is Cure. Not having the best results this year. Again, one of the best TBT players and also a great TBZ player, as you were mentioning, Valdez, last year. Really, really solid. Uh, and you know, nearly a GSL finalist, just barely losing to Innovation in the TBT. Mm. So, I mean, that was his biggest achievement in individual leagues. He was a top player for Jenner last year, one of their scariest. It's like kind of Maru's second wingman, you know, if you will. Mm. Yeah, he was such an inspiring player, especially against Zerg last year. That's one thing I really remember him for, but we just don't see him much this year. He says, before I go into the army, I want to see Jenner win. Pretty straight up there. Yeah. Okay, all right. A bit tougher to watch uh, per league from the uh, military. Yeah. Don't always have that access. Well, we are going to see a variation on the builds here already. Bjorn with the faster gas. Kira looks like he's going to go for a normal gas timing here. And uh, we'll see if this pays off for Bjorn. Yeah. Wanting to take up a, f a bit faster here. Maybe look for the aggression. Oops. I'm not sure what that flag He came is. from Checo. Oh. Maybe... I'm Check. not actually sure Check. about that flag. Yeah. Czech I Republic. I assume that's what that was, <laughs> yeah. I just don't know the Korean word for it. I'm like, what if I'm totally wrong? Checo. There's, like a, there's actually a place in the world called Checo that I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, All right. Well, it's going to be, yeah, that gas first. I'm wondering what Byung plans to do with this. Going to go for that early aggression with Hellions? This, you know, this map isn't too bad for it because it is such an open wide map. You can really get some work done with that kind of harassment. Seen it against every other matchup as well. Uh, Terran sometimes inclined to go for Hellion harassment against Protoss on this kind of map. It's good positions for very quick, uh, you know, Banshees. Seeing people from all over the place, man. Mm. Grost. Never so, heard of that place. Might be, might be somewhere. I don't know if that's a place. It's just what it said. <laughs> <laughs> Might be some. I mean, it looks like those were some Russian characters, right? So, I think so. Some, somewhere be. that that has that type of uh, character. Anyway, um, people from all over the world. That's the bottom line. But as I was saying before, that good positions for drops for this early gas opening for Byung. Good position for Banshee harass if he wants to commit to that. So, this gas first will pay off for him. Uh, if there are cross spawns, it would be a little bit tougher to actually make that work, uh, just simply because it's a lot more distance that needs to be traveled. 
in order for that kind of early investment to pay off. Ooh, these Marines just barely out of position. This is going to get scouted. Reaver's going to poke his head in here. Going to see the two Marines, and I believe the factory no, oh. just sees the racks. That's about it. It's a big tell that there's no Reaper and there's two Marines, but it's not a big enough tell. He doesn't know if there's two gases up or anything like that. Mm, yeah. Well, I think at this point he knows it was that gas first based on the Marine count and, and the delayed barracks and all that. So he doesn't really have to commit too much with that Reaper. You just got to be careful of what follows up here. I think he's just going to go um, as best as he can, Viking into Raven. Now let's see if Byung, because he's been a bit scouted here, if he's going to go straight Raven as well. We've seen a lot of Terran players really favor this, especially on maps like this that go into the late game most times. This is going to yeah. be a big tell here. This is going to be kind of interesting for Byung. He really doesn't have that many units out here. Kyr's going to have three Reapers out by this time. Looks like he will follow that up with Hellions hmm. behind this. Wow, this could actually do a lot of damage considering what we see right now from Byung. But he needs to group him up and actually go for the harass. Doesn't look like he's doing that just yet. And it's, uh, it's a bit peculiar what we are seeing. His starport's a bit late. We are seeing Cloak actually after the Raven, so it's going to be a little bit of a more mid-game timing Banshee coming out here. This Reaper's going to try to find a way in, but so many Marines, and he's already been scouted. Oh, doesn't oh, oh boy. <laughs> well. Comes in, sees everything. Uh, he even sees the Cloak researching, saw both gases. But does not see the Raven, which is really important. It's just It was just a fake Cloak. It looks like he was hoping it was going to get scouted either by a Scan or a Reaper. And there's that Viking from Cure as well, so he's going to play defensive from here. Both kind of, uh, I guess, indirectly playing defensive based on what they've seen so far. Oh, man. It's oh. okay for a Hellion to get hit, as I guess. It's not, it, rather than like all three or both Reapers getting hit, I guess. It's a little bit annoying. Slows down this push and stops the finishing blows on those SCVs. Yeah, Reapers now looks like he's going to try to go for a follow-up scout, see the CC timing. And the Marines, once again, out of position. Sees the CC, backs off. Still doesn't know about that cloak stopping, though. Yeah, he's got a Viking out. He stops there. He does make three turrets, so that's a bit of an investment, but not massive. And Bjorn is switching into tank production here, almost as if he wants to be very aggressive off the back of this with Marine tank Viking. Uh, yeah. As he gets a third CC up. Certainly getting that impression he wants to go down that mech path. As for uh, as for Byung, I'm sorry, as for Cure, we're really still figuring out what he wants to go. He's got that reactor on his barracks, nothing beyond that there. No upgrades from either side, and I think it just will be that mech versus mech after all. Yep. Gonna swap it off here, start producing some Vikings. Try to get that, uh, that air control back in his favor. Reaper actually gets up here once again, somehow. Sees uh, the army again, sees the Raven and the Marines. I have to say, Cure's Reaper control and his timings to go in and scout. He has gotten a few times lucky, but he's so consistent with how much information he's able to gain with this investment in gas. It absolutely becomes worth it. Yeah. If you guys notice, I mean, he had three Reapers at one point, and the Marines weren't all together, you know, all six of them. So he could have possibly gone in there and done some harass, but he really just was going for the consistent scout, as you were saying, Wolf. Just one at a time, trying to find a specific angle that he could come in, maybe... Uh, uh, Byung wouldn't expect this many Reapers at the same time, so he can kind of get away with that. And it's really paid off for him. It's also controlled a lot of the vision in the middle of the map with the Watchtower, with controlling things like this. This time it's going to be a Marine that tries to control it. Looks like he will lose this fight, but the Reaper can come for cleanup. And will definitely deny some vision here. Another scan going down in the main. And just barely looks like might miss that third CC. I don't believe he saw the two armories either, which is like the most important thing. I'm a bit surprised we're not seeing whether he saw that. It looks like they're at the natural, so. Yeah, and looking at their builds and how this whole thing unfolded as well, you can already see a pretty big supply difference for Cure. I mean, he, he's got ahead because he got that earlier command center, and there was just no harassment despite it being a gas first from Byung. So it's, it's a bit of an awkward place for him right now. But he is going to be going in the mech, and it's actually going to be Cure that's going to go for that uh, st uh, stim. So it's going to be Biotank. I do somewhat worry for Cure because he's going to have to be aggressive with Bio. His barracks are late, and he's invested most of his early resources into a Viking fleet, which isn't going to be very useful at this stage in the game, especially for someone's kind of scrolling back in the mech. And this beautiful scan reveals everything, except the Vikings, I suppose. That's a pretty big deal. I mean, he's going to come into this fight. Maybe like he, he decides not to make as many Vikings after all, like he's stopped right now. Could uh, really come back to bite him, and it's kind of important to stop mech uh, having air control if you can, because they can go for those hellbad drops on your bio and uh, 
make things very, very difficult to deal with. I'm just concerned he's not going to be able to stop Byung from taking this third CC with all these Vikings. They're not going to be very helpful in this early stage of the game. It's kind of interesting. I think it was Gumio. I forget which Terran he was playing up against. Maybe maybe Innovation, or maybe it was Flash. It was in his GSL group that I think it was me and Moonlight casted, but he went for straight bio on this map, just like tons of barracks, uh, trying to get into the bases, just went for tons of drops at the third base uh, when it did eventually drop down, and it ended up working out for him because he got huge map control. They were at cross spawns, so he had much, a lot more space, could use that mobility to his advantage, but uh, these days, whenever we see this kind of Bio tank style, like we saw it out of Maru uh, recently against Flash, did not work out, and uh, just hasn't been as powerful as the Terrans kind of figured out mech better and better over here in Korea. Mm, yeah, it's really going that way. Yeah, I feel like if you're going to make bio work versus mech, it really has to be at a specific timing where you get ahead. And you kind of, it's still a tough game after that, but because you have that slight advantage, you can kind of try to snowball it. And usually that happens at the third base. We saw MMA win a game with bio with the timing on the third base. You know, just a few weeks ago with Spenu's match. Um, and this is the kind of thing that can work out. But when you stockpile Vikings like this, you're really playing for the late game. But you're also basically going to allow someone like Young to have a third base for free. He's going to go and try to find some Hellion Harass here. Not going to be the best angle for him to find it. Let's see if he can do anything. Could be able to do something. This is Marine's waiting for him, though, which is a good thing. And Tank's not too far away. Cure's vision control. He has had a Marine in every single pathway the entire game. Replaces them when they die. Oh. This is crazy. Ooh. Doesn't wow. see all of it, though. So he's place. only a small chunk. This is interesting. I, I'm really looking forward to seeing Kira move out and actually start to use this army. He's not going to wait till the late, late game when the mech Terran maxes out. But, uh, hmm. yeah, he's making it an interesting composition with this kind of Viking fleet. Uh, what? A lot of bio and tanks on the way. Look at this. Three armories as well on the way here for Cure and an additional factory. Is this, is this going to be like... Bio it's like the Chimera. Mech. It's like the Chimera, like Marine King. I'm going bio, not really. A, here's the mech coming later, sort of build. He's gonna do a Viking uh, attack here. Yeah, he's gonna just try to win the air battle. He knows he has an advantage. There's very little anti air here. There's oh, no man. Marines or, or turrets. There's almost none, and he's gonna be able to kill a medevac and two oh, Vikings, Raven. and he's gonna get this Raven. Oh, Seeker Seeker missile. Missile. Come down. He no split. split. There we go. Oh, very that was nice scary. split towards the end. That was very close. Auto turret, like the best anti-air he's got. Oh, that Thor. He can't mm. land these on top of this army, but yeah. he's eliminating a lot of the air, which is what he wanted to do. He can just send these home and repair now. Yeah, but I don't know if this bio is going to find a way in. Ooh, a Widow Mine hit here very strong as well. Yeah, is he really going to be able to find an angle after all of that? Especially with Thor's coming out, he's got two now to deal with the heavy Viking count of Pure. So many Hellbats on the ground as well. The last thing that Cure wants to do is land these Vikings on top of all this AoE damage. Yeah, it kind of looks like he's just posturing outside. No full commitment just yet. And with these extra factories and those mech upgrades, he, he could very well just be transitioning at some point. Maybe after a fourth base, maybe after an attack. Yeah, maybe transitioning into even more starport tech with a little bit more, you know, tanks with a transition out of the bio. He's still getting 2-2, though. Uh, this is very strange what we're seeing from Cure, to put it lightly. Well, well, look at this. He's found an opportunity to do some damage to the fire. Not finding too much there. We're losing a lot of Hellions for it. it. Looks like he might have wanted to add more expensive units. Just kind of trade that out. He's making more help outs behind those regardless of what I just said. It's kind of cool that Cure, after that little engagement with his Vikings, he stopped any Starport production. Hasn't made Medivacs. Has not made any more Vikings. He's going purely into heavy tanks with bio support. A lot of Marauders. Maybe he's going to try to force out a ton of Hellbats and mm. Thors and then make a huge switch into a very strong ground army while also keeping that air advantage? Maybe. It's, it's such a unique style we're seeing right now. Yeah, you know, actually, I think there's a lot of truth to what Valdez just said. If you actually make this many Vikings and try to control the air with them, it does kind of force a big Thor response. And if you see a too big of a commitment to Thors, then suddenly Marauders and Tanks are kind of the counter to that sort of army. It's almost like he's trying to play a mind game here, force them into one thing and already have the counter ready. but. We've never seen a composition like this work very well. Pol played like this size of Wings of Liberty, he just cut Marines out. He was like, like pure Marauder tank for a while, but 
it stopped seeing popularity like back in 2012. It's just not a standard comp. Well, hold that to what we actually are seeing the big mech move out. And they got a pretty decent composition to deal with everything. It's really going to come down to Kira having a good fight. This is not too bad of a concave. Yeah, but it's a late siege. Yeah, pretty late siege. And here come the Hellbats in the front. There still are a lot of these Marauders left over, but the tanks are cleared out. And Kira is going to have to run back. He's basically just saying, I don't care if you have air control. That's dead supply in your Vikings. The Vikings trying to find a place to land. Finally, they get a decent angle here on the yeah, left side. It's not too bad. A lot of Marauders still left over here, trading out a lot. Yeah, look at these Marauders come in. He's just got so many of them at this point. So much of Pyong's army has gone down. And he wasn't all together oh. with his army. This is a huge overcommitment. He thought he had that fight completely won. He's trying to surround, but that was an expensive exchange there. Yeah, he lost yeah. like 20 supply in an instant there. Just four sieged up tanks waiting. Still finds a good angle to harass this base, so meanwhile, uh, the third base down there is just not able to mine. Still got his gases mining there, which I think is the most important part of at least one of these bases. Uh, look at the supply difference now there, and that's the Mech Terran miles ahead right now. Up about 20 supply, 30 supply. At the same time, it looks like Kira's going to try to get an angle here on the fourth base as well. Scan going to come down, but here come the Hellbats, and that's some army that you really can't afford to lose right now. Yeah. Just, you know, Hellbats over here clearing up this overall in general. Uh, you know, lose a few Hellbats to kill a few tanks and to regain control of this location. I think a, a good trade overall, but, you know, let's see what Cure builds. You know, can you actually check the upgrades for his tanks? Because we made three armories, and I don't know if he's even gotten plus or past the plus 1-1 one, one stage. Yeah, he's 1-1. One, one. Yeah, that's what I thought. 1-1 one, one to 2-2 two, two right now. And yeah, plus 3 on the way, but plus 3 for Bio as well, so... He's going to stick with his wonky style. Marauder tank. Marauder tank. It's back. Pult is back. We could see, um, you know, a big switch into Banshees, for example, from Byung, if he actually starts to realize that this is purely going to be an army that lacks anti-air. He also lost the majority of his Vikings. He is remaking those now, though, smartly. As his composition just obviously does lack a lot of anti-air. Uh, with just a few Marines on the ground, 20 in total. Looks like he may be going to uh, pull this army possibly to one side and maybe go for an attack here. He's still doing so much damage with this tank harass. It was kind of cleaned up once. He cleaned up the right side very well, but this this one outside the fourth base now is still doing damage somehow. It looks like he's kind of just trying to, to a certain extent, reinvent the way this matchup is played on this map. He's just abusing these uh, the terrain on the map very well. He's constantly dropping, constantly harassing, finding another angle here. Yeah, it's so oh. hard to get your mech in all these different areas. He's going to lose all the mining here at this fourth base. Yeah, this is the problem with this map. It's such an open map. If you get pulled apart like this, you're going to be losing bases as a mech player. He's just lost so much mining that he cannot rebuild his army. It's very expensive. And every trade that Cure makes is a winning trade because he can reinforce with this composition that's much more mobile. Oh, look at this. Already setting up a really nice position. He really wants to hit this fourth base even harder. Going to be able to get this refinery perhaps even in just a moment. This is pretty unbelievable. I'm, I'm enjoying watching this so much. It's very obvious that Cure is prepared very well for this matchup on this map specifically. Now, this is a great play here. It's just really reminiscent of what we saw Jenner do on day one last week with players like Pig Baby having really cool strategies that no one really expects, non-standard, and maybe he only uses it this one game of his career. Byung is not out of this. He's got a ton of Hellbats here, yeah. and there's no anti-air to protect these tanks versus that. This is the scary moment. Byung is going to go for the push. Where he has to deal with the big army once again. And can he do it this time? He's already got a siege up in a decent-sized army, but here's the drop. Here's the drop. There's the big siege here for Byung. A lot of these tanks out of range, but look at this. The Hellbats doing enough tanking. Now the Thors are going to walk up and clean house. And Kira needs to remax quickly. He's actually got a lot of his army out of position. He's trying to harass me while a few tanks here helping defend. Big counterattack. Could be a misplay here. It could be misdirected. He's already lost a big chunk of his army. If he throws away the rest, a counterattack will just kill him. Byung's not waiting. He's going. Yep. This is time to go. He's taking a huge fight in the middle of the map. Kyuri he hasn't really been able to reinforce. Uh, you know, you could argue maybe he should have taken a fifth base, maybe even another one while he was harassing. He had so much room on this map, but he made a, another CC and uh, never really landed it ever, anywhere else. Well, here we go again. Another big fight. He catches him out on Siege. Yeah, but there's still just way too big of an army here, I feel. The Vikings help zone out the medevacs, and now the Hellbats being healed by so many medevacs of Young, and he's going to clean the rest of these tanks. Now there's a 60 supply lead. Kira won the harass game. He stopped so much mining, but all Byung had to do was max out once, and he had the better army. Mule drop for the BMGG tie game here.
Yeah, no surprise it ended up like that. Uh, Mech is, is the popular build for a reason. Uh, the late game army is just, it can be unstoppable. And he got lucky the first time where he, he traded out very well uh, here to deflect it once, but the second time he just couldn't do it. Couldn't follow it up. He had a lot of opportunities to make that transition as well, but he decided to stay with the composition that does get more redundant in the late game. Yeah. It's kind of interesting, you know, that map, especially played at vertical spawns. When Gumio went for that very heavy harass style, they were at cross spawns. He was able to drop at so many different locations, and he was also able to take so many different bases uh, on the map because he had so much room. Whereas Kira, you know, maybe uh, at vertical spawns, there not as much room, uh, didn't quite expand as aggressively. And uh, also, eventually, as you guys were saying, Byung had enough to uh, get that maxed out mech army and just go for the push. I feel like one of the things about TBT in general is every every unit has a counter, basically, and every unit is strong. It's one type of unit. So if you build, it's basically, that's why there's two styles. It's bio and it's mech, because if you're going for bio, it means you have this really strong force that can kill unseeged tanks. It's very strong together. It's very quick. It's very mobile. And you have mech that's really solid and very turtly, and you build the same composition that's the most cost-efficient composition in the game. And if you build half of each, you only have half the strengths of each. Your army isn't as good at harassing because half of it is immobile. It, you have to have your tank sieged up and you have to have your buyer coming in. It's like you kind of split the strengths of both styles. And so when you go to a fight, the mechan player is going to win every time. Even though you can harass sort of well, you don't harass as well as you could if you were pure bio. You can't base trade with this comp. So it's, you know, good for dealing with some cool tank siege ups, for example, and protecting those with your bio. But when it came to actually taking a fight, he couldn't do it. Well, guys, we're going to take a short five-minute break before we get into Bjol and SOS. Stay tuned.